G'day and welcome back to another episode of Tomo's Tune-Ups. On this episode, I'm gonna show you how to check piston ring gap in the cylinder bore and on the piston. All right, so first things first, we have our new piston and our gudgeon pin. So what we're gonna be doing is grabbing our piston out of the plastic, and we're gonna be measuring the piston rings that sit inside the grooves on the piston. All right, so first thing we need is our piston. So that one there, and we have our piston rings. There are quite a few here. So let's run through them. This top one here is the top one that is gonna go at the very top edge of the piston itself. So this one right at the very top, so number one. And then how we know it goes to number one is because it has no leading edge on it whatsoever. It actually has stamped here, you probably can't see it, but it says plus 40th hour of an inch. So plus 0 0.040, that one is gonna go on the very top, so number one. Number two has a leading edge at the top and on the bottom. So it has a bit of a chamfer just here and then the opposite side. Once again, this one has plus 40 thou. So that's gonna go number two and I'm gonna have the writing facing upwards. Now the third one is the oil control ring. So we have a garter spring just here. So it looks like a little bit of a wavy ring. And then we have these two here. So this sits on either side of them. So once again, these have no way in which they go up. Sometimes it'll say top or have a dot and that denotes whether it goes up or down, but these can go in any direction. So we have two of these. So what we need to be doing is getting the piston like this. We're gonna be grabbing any one of our rings, or I suppose you wanna be starting at number one and working your way through and checking each ring individually. I'm gonna show you one, and then it's essentially repeating the same process. So we're gonna get it and we're gonna stick it inside the piston ring gap just like that. So it's now supporting itself. What now I need to be doing is getting a set of feeler gauges and we wanna be confirming what our measurement is. So for the top two rings, we're gonna be measuring the gap between the piston ring and the side of the piston. On either side, it doesn't matter too much. It's gonna be between two and four thou's of an inch. So let's start at the smallest number, which is gonna be two thou. And we're gonna be checking the gap. So grab your feeler gauge, like I've shown you before. You just wanna insert it just nice and gently and then give it a bit of a wiggle. Make sure that it's actually able to move. That way we can confirm that it's not gonna to be too tight nor is it gonna to be too loose. So that one's in there. And there's a little bit of drag on that. That's probably about where we need it to be. I could almost guarantee that's gonna be correct. But let's go through and double check the other ones. I'm now trying three thou. And once again, you're just pushing it between the piston ring and the actual piston itself. As long as you have the gap facing downwards, you should be fine. Try again, so once again, testing between the piston ring and the piston itself. Yes, that one's starting to feel quite firm inside there. So I'd say about two thou is about where we're going to be. Once you've checked one, go and check the other ones. Now, between the oil control ring and the piston, it's going to be between 0.0015 of an inch and 0.0035 of an inch. So significantly smaller tolerances. So you need to make sure that when you buy a set of feeler gauges, it not only does imperial, but also metric, or the lowest amount that you possibly can, depending on the application that you're using it on. Now the last one we're gonna be doing is the piston ring gap. So between both edges of the piston ring when it's compressed inside the cylinder. So for all three of these piston rings, they're going to be the exact same specification. So it's going to be between seven and 12 thou of an inch. So what I like to do is stick the piston ring in just like that. We're gonna grab the piston and we're just gonna push it down just a little bit, just to make sure that it's nice and square. So you can use the piston rings inside the piston itself as to how square it is. So just push it down until you're pretty confident that it's fairly square and then remove the piston. Now, once again, we're gonna be grabbing our feeler gauges and we're going to change it to seven thou of an inch and then check the gap between here. You probably can't see because it, it is quite hard to see. I'll try and zoom in as much as I can. But essentially what we're gonna be doing is grabbing our feeler gauge and then checking it between there. I'll try not to hit the camera too much. I'm just gonna wedge it in there. Yep, so that feels pretty good. 
not overly firm, but that is a nice snug fit inside there. So now I'm just gonna go up to the next one, which is probably gonna be eight thou, if I can find it. So once again, do the exact same measurement. Yeah, that feels fairly firmer inside there. So I'd be pretty confident to say that's gonna be fine. I'm just gonna run it directly up to the highest measurement, which is gonna be 12 thou, and then we're just gonna check it. So I'll grab that one there, and I'll be pretty confident to say this is not gonna go in. So seven and eight thou are pretty much where we need it to be, and that's within specification. So yeah, without jamming that in there, yeah, it's definitely not gonna go. So this is a gap that you want to be making sure that you check the specifications with it when you are doing this sort of job. If you don't, if the gap is too small, as the piston heats up, it creates friction. Friction creates heat, which then creates expansion, which then closes the gap. If it's too close, they're gonna to touch and it's gonna bind, it's gonna damage the cylinder walls. If the gap is too small, it's going to let too much blow by and more importantly, any oil into the cylinder or out of the cylinder. So it's definitely not good for it, but it's definitely something you need to do when rebuilding an engine like this one. Well, that's the episode, folks. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Make sure that if you ever do this job yourself, you consult the owner's manual or even a professional if you're unsure how to do it and follow it to an absolute T because this is the sort of time that you don't want to be getting it wrong. Spend that extra time, whether it be half hour, an hour, three hours, whatever it is, to be able to get all these measurements right to ensure that you have the optimum running of your engine that you're building. Stay tuned and keep up to date with all the episodes that I have coming out on my channel. Please consider hitting that like and subscribe button as well as a super thanks to help me out on the channel and help me to grow. We'll see you again on another episode of Thomas Tune-Ups.